I think there's huge shifts going place and uh, taking place in the semiconductor industry and geopolitics really hangs over all of that. And there's two separate uh, interesting stories there that are that are intertwined. Firstly, on the China side, we heard sort of this increase in, in spending on, on China's chip industry. Now, look, China has spent billions of dollars over the years trying to boost its semiconductor industry. The problem is it relies so heavily on the supply chain in countries such as the US, South Korea, Japan, uh, and the Netherlands. Uh, and it cannot get to the most advanced leading edge of semiconductors without companies from these nations. On the flip side, you've got the US saying, well, uh, you know, putting new export restrictions on, getting countries like Japan, South Korea, and the Netherlands on their side to try to choke off uh, China from these key uh, equipment, tools, uh, all sorts of things, so that China cannot advance in the chip space. So no matter how much China spends, they won't be uh, sort of able to catch up certainly not in the near term with the most advanced semiconductors com uh, companies around the world. Now, of course, this has implications for all of these companies, the likes of Samsung, uh, SK Hynix, the likes of TSMC, which have huge businesses in China as well. If these markets are cut off uh, from these companies, there are billions of dollars of revenues for each of these companies at stake here um, as well going forward. So that is certainly uh, something that investors are watching, how these geopolitics plays out and the impact ultimately uh, on these companies. You look at Samsung, they're reporting earlier this week, uh, later this week, they're expected to post their worst operating profit since the first quarter of 2009. That's partly due to the market dynamics of memory chip prices plunging, demand being low and somewhat of a chip glut, but also you add into the mix there if geopolitics deteriorates, if the China market is at jeopardy for Samsung, not only they're having to deal with what's happening in the chip market, but also certainly with the geopolitical factors as well. Uh, there's a lot of questions. Jeff and Karen both got questions, but just, just a very basic one. The Chinese have been very, very good at looking at Western te <coughs> technology and then improving on that technology and then becoming leading edge in a lot of technology, in areas like AI and what have you. And some people say, we're already losing the cyber war, we're already losing the AI war. Why haven't they managed to be so successful in semiconductors? It's just too complicated. I think that's really? the part of the, yeah, part of, the, part of the issue is it's so complicated. I mean, you look at, I think ASML is such an interesting company to look at. It's the only company in the world that can do what they do, produce this extreme ultraviolet lithography machine required by the likes of TSMC and others to make the latest cutting edge okay. chips. So that's a good sort of, I think, example of, of where the chip supply chain is one so contrary, but also so complex. Why aren't there more ASMLs in this world? And I think it partly comes down to the fact this technology is so uh, so complicated. You can't just, uh, it requires huge capex uh, as well to, to invest. And I think that's part of the reason uh, China hasn't managed to catch up. These Western firms have also been quite protective of their technology over the years as well. So I think uh, that, that goes somewhat to it. You have seen some advances in China in certain areas of chips, but often it's lagging technology. It's older technology where they've managed to sort of make some, some breakthroughs domestically.